Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me no wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders and sinners restore to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. 
Who knows whether God will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In a few minutes, we will be invited into the discipline of Lent, a season of reflection on the gift and promises of baptism, and a more intentional focus on the practices of our faith. The word discipline isn't necessarily one we think of positively, though. We may find it daunting to think of adding another thing to our already hectic day-to-day -day schedules. We already struggle to find the time to do the things we want to do, especially when maintaining some level of normal activity for work and school seems to somehow now take longer and even more energy than it once did. I have unfortunately seldom never been very disciplined in my approach to things. I was the kid who crammed for tests at the last minute, stayed up super late the night before the project was due because I was so behind. In my early teens, I didn't have much direction or passion for anything. But one day I was invited by a friend to join the swim team, an activity in which I frankly didn't have much interest at all. But for whatever reason, somehow I did bring myself to that first practice. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. So I went again. 
and then again, and soon it became my routine. Then it became my focus as my days were ordered around practice at 5.30 a.m. before school until 5 p.m. after school and three practices a day over what was supposed to be Christmas break. Once swimming became my new focus, things were different. It wasn't just that it was a fun way to pass the time, because we complained all the time about repetitive laps and sore shoulders day after day. It wasn't just the additional benefits of health and exercise, but friendship bonds were formed, and I was now part of a community that shared in the same schedule, the same discipline, the same experiences each day. And in the context of that community, somehow, in a way that I still can't fully articulate, my life was greatly enriched. All the effort was worth it. I grew to love swimming, and even though now I don't do it nearly as often as I'd like, I hold the water in my heart as my happy place, if you will, a place of refreshment, renewal, and great joy. When the church speaks of discipline in Lent, it is about a way of life together, oriented around our baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As part of the covenant of that promise, we share in practices that help form and grow our faith, that collectively work to turn our lives in a new direction, beyond ourselves, outward, toward God and one another. These practices become a gift, helping us to live more fully and vibrantly as the disciples of Jesus we are called to be, experiencing gifts of grace and new life that we may never have anticipated. As we see in today's Gospel from Matthew, the primary practices of our Lenten discipline are giving alms, prayer, and fasting. Dr. Melinda Quivick, a Lutheran pastor, describes them as an invitation to give toward the well-being of others in a larger way than we have done, to intensify our prayer for the world, and to determine some aspect of our daily habits that would benefit from self-denial. None of these come easily to us, nor are they necessarily in our comfort zones. They take practice, and it's especially helpful to practice them in community so that others can encourage us and lift us up and help us when we struggle. Practiced together over time, these acts become more gift than requirement or burden. Jesus even promises rewards in accord with these disciplines. Not that reward would ever be our motivation or our goal, but it is the promise that when we change our focus, when we turn our lives more fully toward our neighbors and God, by grace, good things can and do happen. Today's Gospel concludes with Jesus' words, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Time and time again, I find this to be true. When we focus our time and our energy on something, when we direct anything we value toward that thing, we are reoriented, and our hearts and often our minds and spirits follow. As I engaged in the activity and practice of swimming within a community, I grew to love it. And in a similar way, when we devote ourselves to the practices of our faith, generous giving, prayer, self-denial, that discipline becomes a gift and new paths are open to us. We grow in love for God and the world. We are motivated to change the ways we act and think, how we invest our energy and our resources. And as we do, we find blessing and new life together. This path will often be a struggle. The season of Lent reminds us that the way of Jesus is the way of the cross. But on the road together, assured of God's grace, strengthened by God's gifts, we find that this, the way of the cross, is the way to new life, to resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Restore in us, O God, the splendor of your love. Renew your image in our hearts, and all our sins remove. O Spirit, wake in us the wonder of your from fruitless
us dear on a pearl our lives like springtime bud and flower. Bring us all Christ to share the fullness of your joy. Baptize us with the reason life that death cannot destroy. Three personed God fulfill the promise of your grace that we when all our searching ends may see you face to Friends in Christ, today with the whole church we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, into the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have neglected your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. 
our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At our baptism, we were marked on our foreheads with a cross of oil which was a sign of God's love in Jesus. On Ash Wednesday, we are also marked with a cross, this time of ashes. We hear the words, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This reminds us that things are not always so wonderful, that we are not always so wonderful. We make mistakes, we hurt people, we sin. The dust reminds us that we need God. But the cross reminds us that even though we are sinners, God still forgives us and loves us through Jesus. I invite everyone to go to your Lent resource box and take out the bag that says Ash Wednesday. In that bag, you'll find a couple things. You'll find a Q-tip that is dipped in oil. You will find a bag of ashes. You will find a little prayer card. I would also suggest having a bowl with you, because that makes it easier to mix. We're going to open our bag of ash, and I'm going to pour it into the bowl. And then we're going to take out the Q-tip, and you might want to dip the Q-tip a little bit, mix it around in the ash. You'll see it starts to mix up a little bit. And then we're going to make the cross of ash on each other's forehead. So I'm going to go to Mr. Chris, and we're going to say, Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
mysterious hour of the insulting tempter's power. Turn, O oh, turn, O oh, favoring eye, hear our penitential cry. By your hour of dire despair, in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Relying on the mercy and promises of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation. Inspire your people in their proclamation of the gospel and strengthen the church's ministries to build up the body of Christ throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you made the earth and all its inhabitants and proclaimed them good. Protect mountains and valleys, rivers and lakes, animals, and plants, and lead us to be good stewards of your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you desire justice and peace. Direct governments and leaders throughout the world to work for the well-being of all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in times of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and strengthen caregivers who attend to those in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Call us to return to you in repentance 
and accompany us with your grace as we reflect on your gift of baptism. Guide us as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection once again. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for all who have gone before us in faith and pray that their example would inspire us to share the good news of your love in word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.